Hi! So as we all know, being overwhelmed is a typical part of the life of an engineering student. I mean, you get calculus and other engineering subjects and those are not quite easy. Add to that that you have to write tons of lab reports. Well, the good news is that we're here to help. We already produced calculus videos and also chemistry 107 videos and these can be found on our channel, Oasis 101. Also, other subjects such as physics are on the way and they're in the making. As a continuation of our chemistry help, we are going to show you how to write useful and professional chemistry lab reports. And by the way, the guidelines we're going to show you can be used for any lab report with minor changes depending on the subject. So first of all, keep in mind that the number one rule in writing a successful lab report is to note everything that happens in the lab session. Please take note of everything, observations, equipment used, measured quantities, or whatever. Also, don't forget that you have to note down your partner's name. So let's get going. Well, first of all, let's talk about the main components of a lab report. First of all, you need a title page. Then, you're gonna need an abstract, a results section, a discussion slash conclusion section, and finally you're gonna need the calculations section, which can be added to the appendix if you have an appendix, or it can be a separate section as it is. For the title page section, you need to write the experiment number on the top of the page. Then, you have to write your name, obviously, and then the turn in date, and then finally your partner's name. That is it for the title page. Sometimes professor might ask you to write your UIN or your signature, but for the chemistry lab report, at this point, you don't need to do that. So that's it for the title page, basically. So next on our list is the abstract. Think of the abstract as a summary of the report. It tells what is the report about. Your abstract should include the purpose of the experiment, and you can say that clearly by saying the abstract of this experiment is da 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 da, or you can be creative. And then next, it contains a brief procedure of how you perform the experiment. Please do not be very detailed in this as we're going to explain it more in the results section. The most important results should also be included and the significance of the experiment by giving a real life application of where the experiment can be applied. Keep in mind that your abstract should be one to two paragraphs only. So moving on to our next component of a lab report, which is the results section. And by the way, it is the biggest section of any lab report. It's also the most tedious sometimes. It should contain raw data gathered in the lab session and it also should contain any graphs or tables that were derived using the raw data. Please do not forget, keep this in mind guys, when you put these tables and graphs, do not forget to refer them in the paragraph before the table or graph and also put titles on them. Do not just leave flying tables and graphs without being referred or without titles. This keeps the reader lost. Also, do not forget to write down the detailed procedure of how you got the results and data in the tables. Finally, restate the important results in words again. Moving on to the discussion slash conclusion section. Now keep in mind this is the most important section because it presents your understanding of the experiment. It shows that you actually know what you're doing, not just placing numbers in tables and graphs and following orders in the lab. It should contain answers to discussion questions at the end of each experiment in the lab manual. Now keep in mind that when you answer these questions, answer them in continuous paragraphs, not bullet points. And please do not rewrite the questions again. It should also contain an error analysis paragraph, which explains the possible reasons of error and different data, and how to improve the results in the future. Finally, restate the significance of the experiment by giving a real life example, and this could be the same example you gave in the abstract. And now we have finally reached the calculations section. In this section, it should be the simplest section of your lab report. It includes sample calculations, by which I mean put one sample of each calculation you did. So if you did 10 additions, please only put one addition process. Do not put the 10. It's going to be tedious and painful for the grader. Also, show the formulas that you used. So if you added masses, please say that mass equals mass 1 plus mass 2 in text and then do the calculations and numbers below. And finally, label the calculations. So say what each of these calculations is used for. So for example, say for using, for finding the total mass, we, f we say that mass total is equal to mass 1 plus mass 2 and then write 5 equals 2 plus 3 or whatever. So now we're done with all the components of a lab report. We know what each section contains and how it is organized. So what could possibly go wrong? Well, let's see what are some of the common mistakes when writing a lab report. And by the way, I'm gonna list them in order of occurrence. So the first common mistake is submitting a lab report with an unprofessional title page. 
and this is because the title page might be unorganized, things are not in order, text is unaligned, and this could give a really bad impression about your lab report even before the grader sees the results and abstract and discussion of their lab report. And actually you want it to look professional because your lab report, today you're submitting a lab report to a teacher, tomorrow you're gonna be submitting it to your boss. The second mistake in line is the long abstract. Some people write their life stories in the abstract and fill it with long explanations and procedures. Please make it brief and short. The, the abstract basically tells the reader what is the lab about and the reader is not at that point interested about understanding the whole experiment. Third problem is unitless numbers. And if you write a mass of 4.5, you need to mention whether it was grams, milligrams, kilograms, or whatever. Because this says a lot about the data and makes a difference. And then we have excessive units. And by this I mean that you put units in each table. You should write the units on top of the table for each column. But you do not have to mention these units in each row of the table for each data point. Fifth problem is untitled figures and graphs and these sometimes are not referred. Please refer them before you put the figure and also put a title on the figure or graph that you mentioned. This keeps the reader engaged and you don't have like flying graphs everywhere. Next we have bullet point discussion answers. I, al I already warned about this point when you're answering the discussion questions please do not put them in bullet points. Make them in continuous paragraphs. Be creative in answering these questions and making them in a full readable text. Next in line we have excessive calculations and this is in the calculations section. A lot of people when they put the calculations they put every single calculation even if it was repeated and this is tedious. Please put one sample of each calculation you put. Finally we have the problem of leaving no references. If you use any reference that is a website, a book, the lab manual, please put that in reference section. This could get you in a serious trouble with plagiarism if you do not put these references. I know it sounds straightforward but please a lot of people forget this it's it's so simple just whenever you use something just put that in there put it in the correct form APA or MLA style depends on what the lab TA asks for please put references and save yourself the problems I hope this helped you write a professional lab report I hope I did not miss some points these are general comments a lot of people might have different opinions in this but I think you should be doing fine at least for the chemistry 117 course Thank you for watching and have a great day.